So let's continue our dive into Django. We're now going to start looking at the admin UI. Now, as I mentioned at the end of the last video, the Django admin is one of the big selling points of the framework. So we're going to have a look at it in this video. Before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page just below the video. And thank you very much to everyone that's contributed to that. And if you want to join the channel, we've also opened up memberships. Let's dive in. We're going to continue from here in the documentation. Now, the philosophy behind the Django admin is that generating admin sites for your staff or your clients to add, change and delete content is tedious work that doesn't require much creativity. And for that reason, Django entirely automates the creation of admin interfaces for the models in your application. And the Django admin is not intended to be used by visitors to your site. It's intended to be used by managers. Now, if we scroll down here, we're going to see how to create an admin user. This is really important because in order to access the Django admin, we need what's called a super user available in the application. So we have a command here called create super user. I'm going to copy that command. Before we execute that though, we're going to go to the database in Beekeeper and let's have a look at the user table. Now this is one of the tables that comes built in to the auth module in Django. And at the moment, as we can see, we have no data in that table. Now when we create a super user, it's actually going to create a row in this table. So we're going to see that in a second. Let's go back to VS Code. And what we're going to do is paste in that create super user command. Now you can give the super user a username. We're going to call it admin and let's give him an email of admin at test.com and we can create a password here. Now, once we've done that, it's going to create that super user in the database. As it says at the end of the command, super user created successfully. If we go back to Beekeeper Studio, we can refresh this table and notice we now have a row appearing here. And if we scroll to the right hand side, we have the username of admin and the email of admin at test.com. Now I have a confession here, I used a super secure password of test, but we don't see the value test in the password column in that table. And that's because Django automatically hashes that password. And that's for security reasons, because we don't want plain text passwords in our database. And the reason for that is very simple. If this database was exposed or if someone got a hold of the data, if the passwords were in plain text, they would have access to that password alongside other user information. And that's potentially really going to be damaging to that user and to you as a company or an organization. So you want to protect your applications by hashing password and that also protects your users. So that's a quick aside here. We now have a user object, one row in the table. And the reason this is a super user is because it has is super user set to one. Now there's another column here called is staff and that is also set to one or true. And the is staff column here for a user that determines whether or not they can log in to the Django admin site. So if you want to give a user access to the Django admin UI, you have to set is staff to true. And that is automatically done by the create super user command. And the is super user column that controls some permissions in Django by automatically assigning all permissions if is super user is set to true. We don't need to worry too much about that. You just need to know that if you want to access the Django admin with a user, you need the is staff column for that user to be true. Now with that said, it's time to actually access the Django admin UI. So let's go down to this part of the documentation. We're going to start the Django development server and we've already seen the run server command. So let's run that just now inside the application. And what we need to do is go to a particular URL in the application and that is slash admin. So let's open that up just now. And when we do that, we're presented here with a login form. So we created a user with a username of admin and we have that super secure password of test. Let's enter that and we get taken to this page here and we can see a couple of different objects that are represented in the admin by default, groups and users. Now, if we go to users here, we can see that single user that we have created called admin and we can see the is staff field has a tick here because that user has access to the Django admin UI. So what the admin is giving us here is an interface to look at all of the users in our application. Now, if we go back to the documentation, let's scroll down here. And you can see the screenshot of what we saw in the Django admin, the groups and users. These are editable content provided by the auth package in Django. But what we are creating in this Django tutorial is a polls application. Now we have two models that we created, question and choice. We want these to be editable in the Django admin UI. But at the moment, if we go to home, we don't see those models represented. So how do we add them? Let's go back to VS Code and we're going to see how to do this. Let's bring back the sidebar here and inside the polls application, we have a file called admin.py. What we can do is register our models in this application within admin.py. 
And that's exactly what we're going to do now. Let's go back to the Django documentation. And what we need to do is we need to import the model that we want to register or the models that we want to register. And I'm going to do that just now. So from the models module here, we're going to import the question model. And then we have a very handy function here, admin.site.register. So we're going to paste that in here and we're going to register the question model with the Django admin. Once we've done that, we can go back to the Django admin itself and let's refresh this page. Notice at the bottom, we now have the question model. So let's now explore what we can do with the question model. I'm going to click this here. And what we're taken to is this list page. We saw that for the user as well. Currently, we only have a single question in the database. But what we can actually do with the admin is we can add a new question. So instead of doing that via the shell, as we saw in the last video, we can add a question here. So let's add the question, what is the capital of France? And we can select the date time for that. And let's save this to the database. And now we're taken back to the list page and we can see that new question appearing here. And we can click any one of these and actually edit the existing values. So instead of new value, I'm going to add a new question here. So let's add the question, is Django better than React? And we're going to set that to the current time and we can save that. So this is how we can add new questions. We can edit existing questions and we can view the list page for all of the questions in our database. And we can also delete questions as well, for example, by selecting these questions. And then in this drop down, we can click delete selected questions and then go and we get the confirmation page. I'm not actually going to do that, but we can delete questions using that mechanism. Now Django does a lot under the hood here. For example, when we add a question, this form is generated automatically from the definition of the question model class. And the field types themselves for actually entering the data, these are generated by looking at the data type on the model class. So if we go back to models.py, for the question model, we have a car field. And that is mapped from a car field to an input of type text when we create the form from the model. So this has an input of type text. If we right click this and inspect the DOM, we can see that input of type text here. And Django does the same for date published. If we go back to the model, that is a date time field. So Django admin will know how to generate the correct field types for that data entry. And at the bottom here, we can save this and we can also save and add another one or save and continue editing the existing model. So these are options available when you want to add a new question and they are going to be there for any model that you develop in a Django application that is added to the Django admin UI. Now let's go back to the question list page here and we're going to go to one of these questions. Let's say is Django better than React? And notice at the top right we have this history. Let's click that. And this gives you a historical record of the changes that were made by the Django admin UI. So for example, on July 15th at 5.01 p.m., the user admin has changed the question text and also the date published field. So that's a audit log, if you want to call it that, of what's been changed on that particular model and who has actually made those changes. That could be super useful for an admin as well. So if you have managers that are going in and adding data, updating data and so on, this is going to give you that audit log of changes that were made in the Django admin itself. Now that's the end of the Django admin tutorial. What I want to do to finish this is show a couple of bonus features. So let's go back to questions here. So on the Django admin UI here, notice that we can see a header at the top that says Django administration. And if we go to the home page, we also have this subheader of site administration as well. So this is referred to as the site header and this is the site title. What we can do is we can go to admin.py. So I'm going to open this here and we can add a couple of properties here. So I'm going to paste these in just above where we're actually declaring the models. So we can say admin.site.site header, and we're going to set that to polls admin, and the site title, we can set that to the world's slickest admin panel. Now, if we save that and go back to the Django application, let's refresh this page, and notice that the header at the top has changed to polls admin. Actually, this did not change, it's still site administration, but actually I set the site title here, Notice that you can see the world's slickest admin panel now appears in the title at the top of the browser. So that's my mistake. This is not the site title. This is actually referred to as the index title. So if you want to change that, we can go back to admin.py. So I'm going to look at admin.site and we can set the index title here. So index underscore title, if I can ever type that correctly. Let's just set that to something for now. Amazing title. And then we can save the file and go back to the admin UI. Hopefully this time this is going to change. And it does. So that's a quick bonus tip here. If you need to change these properties for your Django admin site, including the title at the top, you can very easily do it with these properties of site header, site title, and index title. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to move on. 
and we're going to look at actually developing proper pages for the polls application. So that's coming up in the next video. If you found this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we have below the video. Thanks again to everyone that's contributed. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And we'll see you in the next video.